Hello, I'm going to look at uh, using Dask and Distributed on some GitHub data on EC2. Uh, we've previously spun up a cluster in EC2, um, and we're going to connect Distributed to that cluster. You can see here there are 72 worker processes running 72 threads. This is actually nine different double extra large nodes. This cluster is running on EC2 US East, and the local machine here is it's in California on consumer broadband. So this is running not on the cluster, but on my local local laptop. Uh, just to make sure there's nothing actually on that cluster we care about, let's restart it. Okay, so our data set is the GitHub archive dump. We have all public entries um, for the first half of 2015. Uh, for this particular snapshot, we're just going to play with the first month in January. Uh, the data set is fairly large. We actually can't fit it onto the cluster. And we're going to start off with a smaller data set. Uh, even though I'm saying small, this is still fairly sizable. So what am I doing here? I specified a GitHub bucket and a prefix for all of the keys in the bucket. Uh, and that gives me a Dask bag with a lot of lines of text. I don't want text. The data is encoded as JSON. So I'm going to map the sort of standard JSON loads function on top of that. Uh, I'm now telling the scheduler to persist that data in distributed memory uh, using this persist function. And so that's making sure that all of our data is in cache. Uh, so here we see it's finished, and we can look at what one of these looks like. So um, here we go. This is one of the records. There are a variety of kinds of records inside of this data set. Uh, let's go and see what they look like. Uh, so let's pluck out the type um, key, which is this guy. And let's just look at the frequencies of those. And let's, for fun, let's time to see how long that takes. OK, so these are all the events that happened in January on GitHub. And you can see there's you know, a million create events. Here's a forking event. Here's you know, some watch events. Um, and so we were able to scan through the entire data set in roughly two seconds. And that was because we were done all the hard work of loading it into RAM, decompressing it, and deserializing it from JSON. So we have on our distributed workers a lot of uh, just Python objects sitting around, and we can easily ask them questions. Uh, I just want to reiterate that even though we're typing here locally and we're getting this sort of this interactive experience within the Jupyter Notebook, all of the computations are being shipped off to the East Coast and being run in a cluster on EC2. Okay, uh, total we have about, let's see how many is that? That's 1,000, that's around 14 million records. Not huge, but when you're, when you're encoding these records as uh, dynamic data structures like lists and tuples and dictionaries and strings, uh, they can be quite uh, bloated in memory, which is why this is uh, a bit costly. If we could encode this more efficiently, we could probably do this on a single machine. Okay, so let's, uh, just as an example, let's play with uh, a nicer you know, data set to work with. We're gonna filter out all of the commits or events that had to do with the Jupyter project, uh, which is the project that creates this notebook that we're using, among many other things. Um, and this is much, much snappier, right? So we can actually ask how many events there were. There weren't that many in January. Uh, and in this 200 milliseconds, we've created a computation. We've shipped that computation across the United States. We've uh, scheduled all the tasks that need to happen on all of our workers inside of EC2. We've gathered the results and we've shipped them back to our computer in the, on the West Coast. And that all happened in sort of a snappy interactive time in this sort of 200 millisecond window. And that's actually quite interesting. We could, we could plug this into um, any sort of interactive visualizations and they would still feel, feel snappy. So let's look at one of those. And we can see here, here's an event that was happening on the NB Viewer project uh, by the contributor Mark Steve. And there's you know, a lot of other information here you could play with. Uh, so let's just play with a couple things. Let's see all of the different uh, repositories that are out there under the Jupyter, sorry, all the repositories under the Jupyter organization that were touched on GitHub in January. Uh, we also look at who the most active users were in that month as well. Uh, so Kyle Kelly was quite active, uh, MinRK was quite active, uh, and various other people. You can even see here some people who don't explicitly work on the project, like Scott Sanderson, uh, and some of the historically more active people like uh, Brian Granger are uh, uh, less active than they, than they used to be. Um, so we've been seeing these progress bars from time to time, and they're showing you both a snapshot of, of what's happening and also all the different pieces that are going into creating that computation. So in our previous computation, we're seeing we're plucking out a few different fields, we're computing frequencies, 
And you can see those frequencies being separated out here into uh, sort of the embarrassingly parallel part and then the bringing the results together part. Okay. Great. Um, so that was with uh, one month of data and we could you know, interact on that fairly interactively, which is pleasant. Uh, we did, however, if you recall, go through this sort of long process up here, it took 41 seconds, of loading all the data into RAM, uh, decompressing it and deserializing it. With the full data set, we actually don't have enough nodes on EC2 to accomplish that task. Uh, so instead what we're going to do is we're not going to persist the data set at the beginning. We're instead going to persist the data set later on after we filter out uh, to just the Jupyter commits. So we're going to do that here. We're going to read now the full data set. Uh, this is taking time not because the cluster is running, but because we're actually interacting with S3 and finding all of the um, keys within the bucket. Uh, and then now here we're going to do our filtering like we did before, um, but persist just the, just the Jupyter projects. And so this is going to take a little bit. Uh, let's see the progress bar snap up here. Yeah, and so you see here there are you know, 3,600 keys we're looking at, and we're, we're flowing through them quickly, but it's going to take a, take, take a minute. I'm going to pause the recording. We're going to come back in a moment. So we're coming back now, and we're mostly done. I wanted to point out that even though this progress bar is running, we still have full access over our, over our interpreter. Uh, everything within the distributed scheduler is asynchronous. So we're using things here like this compute function. That's a holdover from Dask. Uh, but there's also asynchronous versions of all of these things. And so you can compute, or you can ask the distributed system to compute for you while you do your own work. Uh, everything happens separately. So here we're almost finished. And we were able to filter out from all of the GitHub activity on Jupyter, uh, all the GitHub activity on GitHub, uh, all the Jupyter commits within about two and a half minutes using nine decent machines on EC2. So now that we have that, uh, everything should be fairly snappy. And we can see that there were 7,000 actions on GitHub on Jupyter for the first half of 2015. Uh, just to verify, this is again from January 1st to May 31st. Uh, and then we can do you know, some more sizable computations, like computing all of the um, all of the events. So it looks like Jupyter Hub saw a lot of activity in the first half of the year, and you know, some other smaller. Oh, oddly, NB Convert was fairly inactive during that time. Uh, so we can sort of gain some insight uh, in interactive timescales. Uh, just to be clear, this data set that we're working on, this Jupyter subset, is actually quite small. It'd be much faster to work locally with this data set. Uh, we might want to bring all the data local and then compute it later. So we're going to do that, and we're just going to bring the full data set from the East Coast to the West Coast, and we're going to play with it on our local machine. This is going to take a minute, so I'm going to pause. Okay, we're back. It took about 30 seconds. Uh, and now we've moved the full subset of the GitHub data set from EC2 just to a local list. Uh, so we can grab out one of those items, and we see the same inter interactions we had before. So here's the same work from Mark Steve working on NB Viewer. Uh, and now we can do you know, normal for loops or just in Python space. Uh, I wanted to do this just so we get a sense for the timings we should expect. Uh, so we can actually compute everything we just computed before, not in 200 milliseconds, but in 11 milliseconds. So most of that round trip time was actually taking up our time. It was um, you know, the various latency going from West Coast to East Coast, interacting with C2. Uh, still, 200 milliseconds isn't bad. Uh, it's, you know, distributed systems are getting quite snappier these days. Uh, but as a general reminder, if you have data that can fit locally in memory, it might be best to eschew the whole distributed system and just go for local data. Okay, great, that's it. Um, as a reminder, uh, you can go to distributed.readthedocs.org and dask.pydata.org. Thank you very much.